Hi folks, my name is Matt Smith and I am the current president of the Paint Plain Air Painters of America. And I'm here with three of my fellow members, Dan Young, Skip Whitcomb and Mitch Baird. And uh, in 2021, we are going to be the four instructors for the Master Series Plain Air Painters of America workshop with the Scottsdale Art School. The actual dates of the class are February 22nd to the 26th. We're all really looking forward to it. We all have a uh, very close and long relationship with the school. And I would like to take a moment and let each, uh, each of uh, the fellows talk about it. Mine started in, uh, believe it or not, in 1984. It was the second year the school was open. I was uh, enrolled at Arizona State University studying painting in their art department at the time, but uh, Jim Reynolds was teaching a workshop. So I, uh, I did school for a week to go, to go over and have access to, uh, to what I thought was one of the great painters of our time. And I, I still believe that. And it was a life-changing week for me. He opened my eyes to what uh, uh, foundational structure in art was and how to approach it and how to think about it and how serious it was. And it was uh, quite, a, quite a shift from what I was learning over at Arizona State. So it set the foundation. And for the next seven or eight years, I took a number of classes over there with the uh, with the likes of uh, Clyde Aspavig, Paul Strisick, uh, Skip Whitcomb here was one of my instructors over there. So I came full circle. Eventually, uh, in 1990, I began teaching at the school a local outdoor painting class. And so, so my, my relationship with the school is is very close and very important to me. Uh, they've been a phenomenal, uh, phenomenally positive uh, uh, part of my life for for. Gosh, I hate to think how far back. <laughs> um, all these fellows here I've met either through the school or through friends uh, that I met at the school. So it's a, it's, it's a very important thing in the entire art community and it's good for all of us. But uh, I'd like to uh, take a moment and uh, introduce Dan Young, who I've known the longest of these uh, uh, folks and let him explain what his connection to the school was and, uh, and uh, how important it is to him. Well, first of all, thank you, Matt. I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm really excited about this Papa workshop that this is maybe the third or fourth one we've done now. They're a real sort of unique workshop to give the students an opportunity to, to really study one-on-one -on -one with us and yet get a uh, connection with all of us. Uh, as far as the school goes, you know, I'm thinking my workshop, first workshop might have been with Clyde. Do you remember what year that was, Matt? That was, I think it was, it was 92. 92. Okay. Well, then, then I took the one with Skip. And what year did you teach down there, Skip? The one that Matt and I were in. That, um, I'm trying to remember. I'm thinking that was 93 or 94, maybe. Okay. So that, that was after was... Clyde. Forgive me. I didn't know we were going to be quizzed on dates and I can't remember what I had for breakfast, <laughs> let alone the. I do believe Clyde was the first one I took, and that was, you remember, a so-called master class. You had to submit images, and it was a wonderful opportunity as I was trying to get started in this business to have, first of all, that Clyde was even teaching, and I was fortunate enough to get into that workshop. That's when it was in the old building, that old kind of commercial strip mall down in the same area. It was not only a wonderful experience to work with Clyde, but the people that I met in that class, I know Matt was in there, Ralph Olberg was in there, Dan Robinson was in there. Uh, I think Kevin McPherson might've been in that class. It was a wonderful opportunity to make those connections out, out beyond who the instructor was. It was an eye opener class for me. I mean, it was a real wonderful starting point that got me going down the right path. So. I've always appreciated what Scottsdale Artist School has to offer. They've made a real effort to take top quality teachers and give you, give you an opportunity to study with them. So it's, it's been a driving force for my career for sure. And then I've taken several other beyond there, but Skip, and I think I may have done one maybe with Kim English through there. I don't remember for sure, but it's, it's a wonderful experience for sure excited to now be teaching with them. 
Skip, uh, I, I met you, I believe, in Wyoming at, at a common gallery we were showing in. Uh, your name was out there long before I ever knew, knew you. I, I knew who, who you were through your work. But uh, with Dan, uh, I ended up taking, uh, I think, it was either one or two classes with you, which was, uh, it just really helped take my work to the next level. It was those connections. Tell us your connection with the school and, and your thoughts on the school, if you would. Well, I've been aware of it for from that inception. And uh, I've always, I knew it was a good place uh, for students. It was, it's basically the gold standard for workshop programs, always has been. And uh, several of the guys like Clyde had, had convinced me to, to uh, give it a shot teaching down there. And I'm thinking it was probably 92 or 93 that, uh, that they called and asked, invited me to, to teach down there. And Matt, you helped me out in a workshop and Dan's helped me out in a number of workshops down there. It just to, I've been, I've probably, I'm trying to guess how many years I've taught there, off and on close to 20 years, maybe, you know, 18 years. And, um, yeah, I'm, the the school has always had a had a wonderful lineup of of uh, instructors and and like like Dan and and you Matt said that you meet some really great people there and uh, the students are exposed to some top notch thinking and and uh, and ways of, of looking at painting from still life to figure to landscape. I mean the whole the whole thing and. Uh, yeah, I, I have my all my memories and past and current are very fond of of the Scottsdale Arts School. Staff is great too. <laughs> it's a good group of people there. They certainly are. And Mitch, what about you? I mean, we we uh, I've known you the least amount of time. We're going back six, seven, eight years. Uh, yeah. Um, once you came in town here, but what's your what's your connection with the school? Share that with us, if you will. Well, I I gotta say, you guys make me feel really young. <laughs> uh, I was about <laughs> ninety four no, uh, when I first <laughs> when I first came to the school. Uh, I was actually just a sophomore in college, and um, our our, our uh, you know basically our, our year of illustration group came down to visit uh, some artists in the area. And I got to walk the school and I kind of didn't know anything about it. So walking the halls and seeing some of the work on the walls, seeing some of the names and the catalog, I, I knew it was something special. Uh, but once I graduated and went up to uh, Oregon, I was up there probably almost 10 years. I never had a chance to come all the way down and, and take a workshop. Um, but the moment I got here, I was it was on my radar and I was luckily able to, uh, you know, meet some of the, the directors and staff there, and they invited me to come on board. That was probably, I'm guessing, 2012. It's about a year after I got here, maybe 2013. And um, just having that exposure and being, it was on, I'm honored to be asked to come in and, and kind of share what I knew. And, and it was fun to, what I love about the school is they're so open and friendly about um, allowing you to, um, even as, as instructors, were able to take uh swap instruction from another another teacher and so i've had the opportunity to do a couple of different painters and and um you know difficult painters to experience their class to help benefit you know my teaching in, in turn for the school but i can never say enough about the school i'm always um pushing others to at least take a look into getting into a class there and then of course the staff is off the charts great to work with so so we, um, it, it, as far as the, the whole Plain Air Painters of America thing, Dan, Dan Young is also one of the board members. Uh, when, when I took over, I wanted to bring back this, this uh, master series uh, of workshops to, to really share what we know. Uh, I mean, when we have a collective group like we do, some of the best in the country, it's important to, uh, sh to give, give back and share that information. And we've all done this, like Dan says, this is, what is it? The third or fourth class we we've done. This one's really important to me because these these fellows here are some of my closest friends. Uh, we paint together all the time. As a matter of fact, we just returned from a week long uh, painting trip in uh, southwestern Colorado with the beautiful fall color and 
and great days and we work hard all day and, and eat dinner and uh, you know maybe drink a little wine and discuss what's going on in the art world and how we can fix it <laughs> or turn it the other way um, <laughs> but when you get a group of uh, of friends and, and fellow artists together like this there it, it, it takes on a whole different experience a whole different uh, level of excitement because we all feed off of one another and the way this class is going to be la laid out is uh, Dan and Skip are going to co-teach and Mitch and I are going to co-teach and we'll, we'll each do two days. So on Monday, the initial day of the class, we're all going to give a, an hour to an hour and a half lecture each on, uh, on a different subject. And then we will split up into a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday groups. And then if you're scheduled for Tuesday, Wednesday, you flip with the other two instructors and after that, and so it should be a it should be a great uh, a sampling for for you folks if you're if you're signed up for the class to see what it is we're doing, and how we approach things, the similarities and and the differences. But I thought I'd go through and just let uh, each one of you fellows talk a little bit about perhaps what you're going to lecture about or what you uh, tend to focus on in this workshop. Dan, yeah, thanks, Matt, and that's. It, it's so much fun when you teach with, with, with other instructors because I learn something every time I teach. That's, that's a guarantee. But I also learn something from the other teachers. I learn something from the students. So that's why I enjoy doing it. This is kind of a different situation the way we're going to tag team two of us together. It's going to be a lot of fun. I've taught with Skip quite a few times. I've taught with Matt. Fortunately, I've managed to avoid Mitch as much as possible, but you know, so it's, it's, but it's 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 really fun, I think, for the students when they when they hear from two of us like this. We may have similar thinking, but we'll approach it a little bit different. So I think the students will definitely get their money's worth with this. Uh, as far as my lecture, I'm going to kind of focus on what I've focused on when I've done these in the past, which is painting your backyard, painting what you know. I hope to expand it. My lecture, I'm going to try to start working on that pretty quick. I hope to expand it a little bit beyond that, where it'll be based on painting your backyard and how important that is with how well you know your subject, but not only how well you know it, each day you learn a little bit more about it. And that's kind of what I want to come across in this how you look at things, how you approach things, how you approach paintings, what your concept is. So that's sort of what, what my lecture is going to be on. And I'm excited about it. How about you, Skip? Yeah, thanks, Matt and, uh, and Captain Dan. What, uh, <laughs> what I will do in conjunction with Dan, that's what I plan on doing, is, is I work these last few years, I've been really uh, pushing a more practical approach to color and uh, especially streamlining the operation outdoors and limiting yourself to around five colors that you can take if you have to pack in a distance so that you have a very functional, practical palette that you can get some solid information. And, uh, and so you're not loading yourself up with, you know, 14, 15, 16 tubes of paint, those things all, that, that adds weight to your, <laughs> to your trip. So uh, yeah, and then we'll discuss the studio procedure also and, and, uh, and kind of discuss some of the approaches to refining your color, uh, creating color harmony. Uh, I've, I've done an in-depth study on this and I'm, I'm excited to present this to the students. I've had great response in the past when we've discussed this and we've done workshop around this. So uh, yeah, and what, what an added benefit to a group like this and the way we're, we're approaching this, this workshop is that you also have access to us uh, after the workshop's over. And so at the end of the day, it doesn't just stop there. We like to get together and grab a bite to eat and maybe have a glass of wine and you guys can fire all kinds of questions at us and you have the benefit of all four of us in these discussion groups. So uh, it's really been a very exciting experience in the past for the students and also for us. Uh, I love teaching and, and if 
I'm with Dan. I mean, I learn as much when I teach as, uh, as if I was a student. And I've always felt that if I don't walk away having learned something new, then, uh, then I need to, to rethink the way I'm approaching this. So it's a, it's always been an exciting, uh, endeavor all the way around for me. And, and I think that's, that's really important for the students and a group like this, it's going to be a lot of fun too. So. Excellent. How about you, Mitch? Well, first I'll say it's a good thing that Dan and I haven't taught together because we'd probably have be out fisticuffing behind the dumpster outside and back, you know, making a mess out of the school. <laughs> uh, you know, it's interesting that what I love about hearing you guys talk is each one of you, there's a, there's a constant current that runs through this idea of teaching and learning and that's humility. None of us have ever gotten to what you would call the master level because it, it never it never arrives. We're always searching, always seeking. Um, and I love that about you guys when I hear you talk and when I hear you uh, talk about principles, you know it's always it's always with a with a childlike mind, you're always seeking and looking. And I know that in my life that's what it's all about. Uh, Matt and I we when we travel, in fact, this last trip, we had a lot of time to really discuss a lot of these painting concepts and it really comes down to the fundamentals. So it was fun for Matt and I to kind of travel together and talk and it always comes back to these core basics. And that's kind of what I plan on um, covering, you know, in this workshop is these fundamentals. And, you know, most people kind of poo poo it or think, oh, it's not that important, but it's the fundamentals that make great painters. You know, it's by sticking to these simple core um principles that makes our work strong uh, you know my my i'll probably focus most on on visual perception i've been digging into this for the last several years really looking at how we have to learn to see optically in an almost an abstract way which i think in turn when you when you come to terms of learning to see that way your work will jump because you're divorcing yourself from the subject and really analyzing and learning to see uh, what's in front of you so that's kind of the angle I'll come at it with, um, obviously with some humor too. I like to laugh with these guys and hopefully with everybody else. Um, I think it's gonna be a really fun group, uh, which will be presented fun, but with really deep information. So I think everyone's gonna come away, um, even amongst ourselves, learning a lot. These are great answers. You can see why why these classes have been so successful. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm there with all of you guys, but uh, what I, I tend to do is distill it like Mitch says, down to the fundamentals as well, and and how you can apply those uh, fundamentals of drawing, value, design, and color to uh, our chosen mo uh, a subject motif, which is uh, the landscape, organic subject matter, which is is not easy. Like Mitch says, you have to sort of separate yourself from the thing, a tree, and uh, and see artistically, which is shape, value, color, and then the arrangement of elements. So. Uh, I see that in all these fellows' paintings. Um, we have uh, great discussions when we're when we're together painting, and and we hope to share that with you. One of the other things we'll be doing is after this class is over, we're all going to travel up to the Vermilion Cliffs in northern Arizona and spend a few day pa few days painting, and the class participants are invited to join us. It won't it won't be a continuation of the workshop. It'll just be friends out there painting. But this is this thing. The school has created for all of us the opportunity to uh, interact with the other artists, for the students, professional artists. These 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 fellows are all, all very highly respected in in the art world, uh, award winners, and and everything else. They're just some of the best of the best, and I'm pretty picky uh, when I'm looking at artwork, and I own work by all these guys, and and, and proud of it. Um, so I hope you can join us there. Uh, another thing I wanted to, to cover basically is the upcoming uh, fundraiser for the Scots Artist School, the Beaux Art Bash. Uh, this past year has been a doozer for all of us. <laughs> it's uh, gotten mm -hmm. kind of hard to tell where this is going, and, and the school obviously had to close down for some time. So I hope I hope folks really step up and support the school uh, with with the fundraiser and over the next uh, a few years uh, with the enrollment so that we can we can make sure it's back up and healthy and running and everything's great um I, are, are all you fellas uh, submitting artwork for the show you, have you yes donated work yep. absolutely 
Yep. I haven't I, sent I, it I'm yet. planning on it. I haven't sent my painting in yet. I guess I'll have to drive it down <laughs> next week. But I am sending a painting to the survey. So, um, so, so we're, we're glad to get that done. Um, is there anything else you fellas wanted to co cover about all this or the school and and uh, and what's going on down there? Maybe maybe, maybe bring some tissues because Dan's going to make you cry in his class. <laughs> <laughs> but through laughing, as you can tell, well, we're we're, a, we're kind of a lighthearted group. We we are wildly supportive of one another, but at the same time, we make sure everybody's uh, ego is in check uh, <laughs> by making jokes and that kind of thing. Um, and it it, it kind of uh, opens the atmosphere for learning and drawing. I think um, I've painted with folks who are who are very structured and and strict and and. Boy, it, it seems to follow through into their work, but uh, you know, when we when we are set up and ready to go, that's when we kick into gear and get very serious about what we're doing. But uh, when we're we're just hanging around and socializing, we tend to uh, really support one another and have a great time. And that's what that's what we're going to do uh, in this class. Well, I think Skip yeah, brought up. A, sorry, ahead, Skip, didn't mean to talk over, but I think Skip brought up a great point when we did this that Papa workshop in Georgia. And after at the end of the day, we would all meet down in the lobby of the hotel. I will promise you, if you ask any of those students that were in that workshop, they enjoyed that just as much as the rest of the workshop, sitting around after having a glass of wine, which seems to keep coming up as a common thread with this group, but don't tell anybody. But they, I promise you, they all really enjoyed that, not only that banter, but they were able to talk to us on an even playing field. They just love being able to get into our world and for us to share with them. I think it, it was a real eye opener for them and it was a real huge benefit. No, I agree. That was that was one of the the, you know, over overwhelming comments was the evening sessions were every bit they got every bit as much out of that or more than they did from the visit you know during the day the workshops because they're stressed during the day when you're trying to feed a lot of information to them and they're trying to trying to put it into action it's it's stressful for them and so in the evenings when they can relax and and ask questions and have discussions about this they're they're much more I mean, they all said almost to the person that wow this was a fantastic experience the way that we structured it and and just the interaction among among those of us that were teaching and uh yeah i mean with this group i've never seen any any uh <laughs> sign of egos getting out of control it's uh we're all pretty down to earth and as Mitch said you got to stay humble with this process or it'll it'll take you down fast and uh, yeah, and you and you never ever forget the basics. If something goes wrong in a painting, you can tra trace it right back to a basic element in there. And these are the things we're going to discuss, and and really drive home how important these things are, how to solve these problems. And uh, yeah, I mean, we'll again, you know, as I said before, we'll have a great time doing this, and I think it's going to be very informative for the students and. Uh, what a what a great place at the uh, Scottsdale Art School. It's a tremendous asset to the art world in this country for sure. So I, I couldn't agree more. I think I'm I'm more excited about this than probably students because I know when as a student, you know, we all learned. I know I did. I learned it with other students or this group learning where you're out accessing what one artists may have an issue with, everybody else can watch that issue be solved, maybe by an instructor. Here, it's like there's gonna be four of us and I, I'm more apt to watch what you guys are gonna say and do. I know we'll we'll probably cover the same principles, but it's interesting how, how you may word it or one instructor may word it different than the other and it clicks. You know, I've had that happen several times in my life. I've been taught the same thing, but one particular instructor says it a certain way and it really clicks. And so I think there's, because there's that variety, I think there's a greater opportunity to learn and experience growth with four instructors versus just one, because your, your mind's gonna be opened to 
the same concepts, but maybe from a different angle. And so I think it's, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say too, uh, because I know um, I'm going to learn just as much as I'm, I'm teaching. Yeah, it's interesting uh, how, uh, again, that we can all have a, a common ground and understanding of the fundamentals, but we all take it in our own separate direction. Uh, to me, that's very important, uh, the, the common language, but a unique vision that, uh, that everybody has, um, and to embrace that and celebrate it, especially in a world where derivative art seems to be the norm. It's, uh, it's kind of nice to see that. Um, I also wanted to take a moment to say thank you to Trudy and Danielle and Irma and everybody, the entire staff down at the school for hosting us. Um, when we started doing these master series classes, one of the first venues I thought of was the Scott Stellar School because I knew they'd be excited and supportive as they have been and because of our long-term connection. And uh, so I just want to say thank you to all you, all you folks down there for what you've done and what you've been able to do with the school and continue to do. It's, uh, it's very important. And uh, I also wish you the very best at the uh, Beaux-Arts Bash and everything that's happening there. And if there's anything the four of us can do to help, just let us know. We're out here. Here, here. I second that. Absolutely. I agree. Absolutely. I want to give a shout out to Mimi uh, at the school. She's a, she's a, a great asset there. She's uh, fields all the calls and all the questions from the students and from the instructors. And uh, yeah, she's, she's Miss Reliable there. So I'm looking forward to seeing her, especially. No, no she one's sweeter too. Yeah. No, no one's sweeter too. True. Exactly. True that. She's, well, she's well, always got a smile. forward to work with you. For, go ahead, Dan. <laughs> I was just saying, she's always got a smile and a laugh. Whenever he, Mimi mm -hmm. answers the phone, he's cheery and ready to go. What do you need? Bring it on. Well, that's the whole <laughs> staff. Wanda, to everybody. Um, I'm looking forward oh, yeah. to working with you fellas and, and then spending a few days up at the Vermilion Cliffs. That's going to be great. I drove through there just recently on the way back from Montana. It was absolutely spectacular. The uh, weather is cool uh, that time of year. The shadows are still long, so it's uh, it's going to be a fun time. And I'm looking forward to working with, uh, like I said, the school. And, uh, yeah, it's just around a cor the corner, so be ready. Excellent. Are we going to are we going to try to invite a few other Papa members to maybe show up for a day or two and be part of it up there in Vermilion Cliffs? Reach out to maybe George and John and some of the other members and see if we can get them on board to join us. That's the goal. If we can get additional, we have a total of uh, approximately 32 members. If we can get some of the additional members up there, given that it's just going to be a relaxed atmosphere, not a not a structured teaching environment that I think that'll be great. It'll give the uh, the attendees the opportunity to have access to other uh, uh, professionals. So uh, yeah, that's the goal, but uh, nothing guaranteed on that. So I'm glad you brought that up, Dan. Thanks. Right. Excellent. Yeah. yeah that'd be great. All righty, fellas. Good talking to you. Good seeing you. And uh, looking forward to February. Yeah, same here. Absolutely. All right. We're in. <laughs>